Hey guys, this is Mr. Post, and on today's extra practice problems, or some extra help, we're going to be looking at scientific notation. And we're going to have a major focus on scientific notation and a minor one on significant figures. Uh, so let's just get right into it, okay guys? So here we go. As we go along in this uh, extra help session, please notice that there is a little control bar at the very top of the screen. You can use that to fast forward or rewind or pause and uh, maybe try a few problems while I do them as well. So you can always pause, try a problem, and then press play again and hear me do the solution, okay? So scientific notation deals with a decimal part, an exponential part, and an exponent part. And as a general rule, okay, a general rule here, our decimal part is what I want to see here. Our decimal part must be a number between 1 and 10. All right, so you're not going to have a decimal part of your scientific notation that starts as like a 0 0.7. And likewise, you're not going to have one that starts at like 10.1. It needs to be a number between 0 and 1, and 1 1.2 is a great example. Our exponent parts times 10, and your exponent can either be positive or negative. All right, we have positive exponents. Positive exponents, they're simply big numbers. Okay, and negative exponents, exponents like this right here, times negative 10. Negative exponents, not exactly negative numbers, they're simply small numbers. And that's one of the main things I want you to get at it today. In addition to practicing our scientific notation, I really want you to be able to look at a number, look at exponent, and quickly say in your mind, is this a big number or a small number? It's pretty critical for your success in scientific notation. Here we go. Uh, you might see a multiple choice test, and if you did, you would see four possible answers. So the, the number in mind here is 4,500 meters. All right. And the question is, which one of these matches it in scientific notation? Uh, take a second and try and uh, figure out. Press plug. And then press play again to hear what my answer is. Okay, here we go. In scientific notation, is a little review session. I'm not necessarily teaching scientific notation. I'm trying to review it. Uh, I'm taking my decimal point, and I'm putting it right over there, and I'm going to move it between the first two numbers. When I do that, I'm moving it one, two, three places over this way. All right, so my exponent is going to be times 10 to the third, or 10 to the negative third. Okay, big first question here. Is 4,500 greater than 1, or is it less than 1? For a number that's greater than 1, it must be a positive exponent. Uh, that means this number right here, negative 3, I'm going to take it away. Negative 3, I'm going to take this number away too. All right, negative 3 exponent would be a number that is less than 1, like 0.45 or 0 0.0045. That would be an example of a negative exponent. So here we go. Which one of the two remaining answers is my best choice? And at this point, it comes down to significant figures. In the original problem, there is no decimal places. And if I'm counting sig figs, my arrow goes through the zeros, and I count, I have one, two sig figs. All right, which one of these has two sig figs? I yeah, hope you guessed it. It was this one right here. So that is the best answer. This is not the best answer. 4.5 times 10 to the third. Good job, guys, if you got that right. Here we go. This number is very similar. If I want to go back for a second. There we go. See that number right there, 4,500? Well, this is 4,500 as well, but there is a difference. This has a 4,500 with a decimal place. So as you recall, last time we eliminated the negative exponents because this number is clearly much larger than 1. Okay, now the next question is, which sig figs is a match? I have a decimal place over here. When I have a decimal, my arrows for counting sig figs come in this way. I have 1, 2, 3, 4 significant figures. All right, this guy right here, decimal point coming this way, one, two, decimal point, coming this way, you bet it, one, two, three, four, six figs. And the winner is number two. Number two matches the top number in scientific notation. Okay, let's do a couple here. We're going to do a couple problems. We're not going to spend too long on them. Let's convert 78,000 into scientific notation. I'm going to take my decimal place right there, and I'm going to move it in between the first two numbers. I'm going to move it one, two, three, four. I moved it four places. This is going to be 7.8 times 10 to the fourth, or it's either going to be 7.8 times 10 to the, sorry, 8, 0, 0, 0. All right, I know that's pretty sloppy. Let me just rewrite that all together, guys. 
7.8 times 10 to the fourth or 7.8 I want to include those zeros up there in the number times 10 to the fourth which one is your best choice the top one or the bottom one it all comes down to significant figures in this problem right here at right, decimal point I'm coming in this way I hit the seven one two three four five six figs this one only has two significant figures it's not a good choice for me this one has decimal point arrow comes in this way one two three four five six figs all right so this number matches my original number correctly based upon significant figures and the next problem it's the same number though in this case we don't have that decimal point that was here originally so originally there was a decimal point there and that did change the number of six figs so in this problem I just want you to see when I'm counting significant figures I'm going through the zeros and I hit the seven eight and I have two sig figs left okay let's count the uh, let's convert this into scientific notation let's take our decimal place and go one two three four so in this case it's seven point eight times ten to the fourth is my correct answer and it matches in significant figures too the next problem 6.02 times 6.0200 times 10 to the third and in this case we're given it in scientific notation and we're going to unravel it and make it into a real number one thing I want you to see over here right off the bat I have a positive exponent that means this number has got to be greater than one when I convert it into a real number I don't want a decimal point because that really is going to determine how I solve this I have 6.0200 and I want you to realize you're going to unwind the decimal place right over here, three places. Three places you're going to move this. You're either going to move it this way or you're going to move it this way. And that really affects your answer. If it's going to be a, a positive exponent, that means a number that's greater than one. If I move it this way, one, two, three, I now have a number that is 6020.0. That number is definitely greater than one, and that would be the correct way to move it. Let's just say you move it the other way. Okay? And you said 6.0200, and you need to move it three places. One, two, three. There's your new decimal place. In that case, you're gonna have decimal point zero zero six zero two zero zero. And that actually is a number that matches ten to the negative third exponent. Alright, the number is clearly less than one zero. 0.006. So we're going to scratch that. The real number is right down here. That is the correct one. 7.5 times 10 to the negative fourth. In this case, we need to unravel this and convert it into scientific notation. I know because I have a negative exponent that my number is going to be a 0, 0.0 something. It's not going to be a number that's greater than 1. So if I took 7.50 and I have to move my decimal place four places now, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. Boom, all the way over here. So now I have zero point, let's fill these up with zeros. Zero, 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 seven, five, oh, is my new answer. Okay, now the other choice I had, and let me just write this crystal clear here so there's no confusion. Zero point, zero, 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 seven, five, zero is my final answer. And I'm gonna box that off so there's no confusion here that this is the real answer. I had a negative exponent, a negative exponent simply tells me this number is definitely less than 1 and greater than 0. It is. But what if you said I want to move my decimal place the other way? Well, 7.50, if we move the decimal place 4 this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, and there's my new decimal. Okay, what you have is 75,000. 75,000 definitely does not, it, well, it is not consistent with the negative exponent. Clearly bigger than uh, 1. 3.5 times 10 to the 6. Maybe you want to pause and do this yourself while I uh, put my answer on here. Alright, it's a positive exponent. That means a number greater than 1. So let's make this number greater than 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is where my new imaginary decimal point is going. And I'm going to fill all these hoops here up with zeros. Okay, so that's a comma goes right there. Comma goes right there. So three million five hundred thousand, and you'll see the first number up here had two significant figures. Decimal point, you're flying this way. One, two. My final answer down here has two sig figs as well. Boom. 
3.5 times 10 to the negative 6, though. Now where the decimal point is going in the opposite direction, I'm going to be moving in the opposite direction. Let's do uh, 3.5. Throw that right in the middle of the page. Why don't you make a choice now? Press pause and choose which way you're moving your decimal place. Okay, to me, I have a negative exponent. That means my final answer must be a number that's less than 1 and greater than 0. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Decimal point goes over there. And I fill these up with zeros. So my final answer is going to be 0. Point, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. And then a 3, 5. Boom. Number 8. This is going to be our last problem for the extra help session. This is 8 times 10 to the third. Uh, 3 is a positive exponent, positive exponent. We should be pretty good now. That's a number that's definitely greater than 1. So this number is going to be something 8 with some zeros after it. So there's 8, and I move my decimal point. Let's make one right here. We're moving it 1, 2, 3 places. There it is over here. Okay. I do want you to check the answer out right now because you have 8,000 as your final answer. You originally only had one significant figure, so let's just say this. If you said 8,000 with a decimal place, you're actually wrong. That has four significant figures. You want to see 8,000 without a decimal place. Decimal place, my arrow comes this way and I count. I have one, two, three, four. I don't want that. I only had one to begin with. Let's cross that number off. It's no good. Let's look at this one down here. Okay, that means my arrow comes in this way, goes to the zeros, and hits the 8. I have one sig fig. Alright guys, there we go. That concludes our extra help session on significant figures. I hope it was helpful. Please stop in uh, after school for extra help on Tuesdays in room C's 217 if you need additional help. Okay, have a great day.